Uh, Todd, thanks for joining, man. I appreciate you hopping on. Are you just here as a spectator today, or do you have any specific uh, questions, concerns, scenarios you want to go through? Yeah, mostly a spectator. <laughs> um, I I will say I've, I've had trouble making calls within both the uh, app, you know, outbound calls within the app um, on the web and also on my phone. It's like it starts to make the call and then just says it's ringing, but it never rings, but it, it's it's actually ringing on the other end, and but the, it never quite connects the call. I was just curious if you've seen any of that or... Um, actually, potentially, that sounds like it could be a uh, microphone permissions issue. Um, so if you're using Google Chrome, um, depending on the computer that you're using, you have to give Google Chrome permission to use your mic microphone. And then you also within your Chrome permissions have to give go high level permission to use your microphone. Um, and I know that we used to see a lot of issues with it. I don't know how prevalent it is anymore. Yeah, it's, like, it, well, it's like if I hang up and then try it again, it goes through. That's that's the weird thing. Yeah, oh, that is really I weird. I have the microphone issue a while back and got that resolved. But anyway. Gotcha. That's different. That's different. Interesting. Um, Lindsay, Nick, if you guys have seen anything and, and have any input on that, you're welcome to to share it. Otherwise, um, if you want to take note of it and, and take it offline, we can do that too. Uh, hold tight. He said, I'm guessing he's looking into this. Knowing Lindsay, uh, he's, he's not a fan of hearing. A pro he's kind of like me. He, he can't hear a problem without also simultaneously starting to think of solutions for it. So um, even if it's not something that he's seen, there's a chance, Todd, that by the end of this call, we've got at least some options, some things for you to explore. So thanks for sharing. If there's anything else that you see come up, um please feel free to share um and also todd if you don't if you don't mind i'm curious um like what agency your high level is signed up with or are you signed up directly with high level and then what you're using high level for um so that i can make the content while you're here on this call a little bit more relevant since we don't have anybody else uh engaging and asking for asking for stuff right now yeah, so a <clears throat> quick, quick uh, recap. I actually used you guys for, I don't know, about a year and a half. Uh, I remember you. You, I did the demo with you, Todd. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, anyway, I uh, I did a, uh, after I left you guys, and it was just, you know, just kind of a transition thing, you know, nothing. I really thought you guys had a great program. Just I was kind of looking for something a little different. Anyway, so I ended up doing this. <laughs> this other deal and it was through a company i think it's called uh, zell marketing or something like that and um yeah. anyway it uh part part of that deal was to you know you pay once and get access to the crm for forever and so that's why i'm still using uh i'm still using their um their version i guess of high level uh, awesome i'm using it mostly to reach out and and do my real outbound realtor calls uh, that I'm doing, and so I'm not really doing a lot of uh, direct lead gen for clients. It's really just to help me make my outbound calls to to realtors and keeping track of that kind of thing. Awesome. So you have, do you have access to like pipelines and stuff so that you can track track your realtors through that right. like progression yeah. that you're trying to? Yeah, trying I, to I set all that stuff up myself. So. Awesome. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, cool. Cool. No, I mean, everybody's got a different, like there's so many different ways to work this business. I mean, uh, it still shocks me to see loan officers that are like continuing to uh, pursue divorce attorneys and, and divorce records as a source of business, but it's still out there and people still make money doing it. It's crazy. Um, and that's, that's one thing I love about go high level and why we are all in on it is it doesn't matter like where you get your business from high level is an amazing tool for managing that business and managing the communications um, that are involved in, in the business. So whether you're realtor only, or um, you work like obscure uh, referral partner sources or your consumer direct or whatever it is, um, you know, 
everybody needs email marketing. Everybody needs social marketing. Everybody needs SMS marketing. Um, everybody needs a centralized place to communicate with all of their, you know, different, uh, the different components of their business, whether it's an agent or, uh, leads from different sources or whatever. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just powerful, man. It's just powerful. Yeah. Um, uh, Okay. So, um, one thing, let's see if we get anybody and remember Todd, like Todd, everybody you see in the room right now is on my team. Like we, like I stacked up, uh, stacked up the, the zoom room this time with, with our team. Fast. Everybody is physically in this office right now. So this is yours. Um, like I said, I can, I can go down a tangent and try and stumble across something that's valuable for you. Um, but anything that you want, uh, anything that you want to go over while we're here, um, this time is yours. Yeah, I, see here. I, I, I just enjoyed, I've been watching it on, on Facebook last couple of weeks and thought I'd just go and join the Zoom today and just see if I could get that question in about the, uh, oh, yeah. Lindsay posted something there. Yep, yep, Lindsay posted something in the chat. Do you see that? Um, okay. So what, okay. So it says, try adjusting your incoming and outbound timeout to higher than 60 seconds in your phone number settings. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm assuming that this is something that you've seen before. Um, so I would give, give that a shot. Um, and then, and then in the meantime, um, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, our trip, uh, Roy, Roy Burr's trip up here. Um, I posted a video in the group about it. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I don't, I'm sure everybody in this group has seen our Facebook ad that's out right now with, uh, it's a loan officer. It's kind of off center because we didn't have Mike, the, the video genius, uh, when we recorded this. Um, so it doesn't like, it's not that pretty, but it's, this, it's a video testimonial. Um, and it like the sound bites that we take from that testimonial and put into the, um, uh, into the, the ad itself. Like the segment is so freaking powerful because he's talking about a, this was back in like November, uh, October, November, I think it was November and, and referring to October and October, uh, it was the second month that he had closed over 20 loans, 20 deals through empower leads. Um, now, this is just him. This is like now he, he has a production team, one other person that's licensed that's helping him do calls like problem solving calls to help him get people pre approved and whatnot. But like, this is Roy's show. This isn't like a, a branch of LOs that are working this and, and getting spending enough money to get the, these kind of results. This is this is Roy and his team. Um, they have their own production team within his branch. Um, and, and it is 100% them that is, that are working these leads and getting them closed. So it's impressive. It's impressive. Over 20 deals closed from any lead source. I mean, if, unless it's Zillow or lending tree, I would venture to say that there's no lead gen source out there in the mortgage industry that can claim the same thing that they have even one customer that's closed over 20 deals in a month, especially in the last six months, which by the way, he did it again in March. He closed another 20 deals in March. I can't, I think it was, uh, I think he had a low month in December, like 12 or something like that. Um, but he's been between 15 and 20. Uh, like other than that, April is looking like a really good month, but we'll see. Um, obviously market conditions are a little weird, but still, still really, really good numbers. Anyways, I share that with you. Um, because if you're somebody who has seen that and said, Oh, this is bullshit. Um, check his, check his, uh, production numbers, like give him a call, uh, whatever. I mean, it, this would be a pretty orchestrated, uh, set up at this point, considering the video that I posted in our Facebook group on Thursday or Friday, that was like the, uh, video of them showing up and us like greeting each other. And then, uh, and then there's shots of us kind of working together and masterminding and whatnot. Um, and so anyways, short story long, like I said, I, like, I, I, I don't, I'm going into all of this. Cause if you're one of the people, the, the number of people that comment on that, uh, and express like that they think it's all bullshit is crazy. Um, and so if you're one of those people, for some reason, I feel like I need to speak to you directly and say, it's not, it's not bullshit, but regardless, that's not what I'm not why I'm bringing this up. Why I'm bringing this up is because we worked for two days straight inside go high level. Basically, um, we wrote 200 
plus, and when I say we, I mean Ari wrote 200 plus email email campaigns um, or like emails to include into email marketing, nurture campaigns and whatnot. We transformed the deliverability of his email by setting up new subdomains uh, and configuring SMTP settings at an advanced level to get him better email deliverability. All of that stuff is already like we already got a text. I haven't told the team yet this, but I told Ari, I already got an email yesterday forwarded um, that was like some 50 year old guy out of Florida that was like, uh, I don't know how you came into my circle, but I believe God has a plan and I'm 52 years old looking to buy a $250,000 house in Florida and have 15 grand in the bank and all that, like responding to an email. Um, so we did some really, really cool stuff around that. Um, I think that email marketing is is, is under tapped like crazy. And at this point, I'm kind of just like spitballing, just throwing ideas out there. Uh, I saw Manny hop on. Manny, you and Todd are the only the only two in here that are not on our team. So you see a lot of names in here, but don't hesitate to speak up and let me know what you're working on, what we can help you with this week, because you and Todd are the only ones in this Zoom room that are not on our team. So we are here uh, for you, brother. How are you? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. How are you doing? Oh, uh, good, man. Sorry about that. I'm I'm actually on the car and I switched from Bluetooth to my headset and all kind of stuff. So yeah, no man, problem. I'm actually doing that too, man. I'm kind of um uh, building out something for uh some email marketing, something to reach out to realtors too, you know, something that's a little bit more um automated with uh, you know trainings and I kind of want to build some trainings that will kind of you know go into their um, email just to add value to kind of warm them up before I start calling okay okay I like that I like that you said trainings and immediately I thought of like events like training sessions that you bring them all or that you like invite agents to is that is that kind of yeah, what you're thinking or you're of, more I like on wanna, demand yeah, content? I kind of want to Kind of on demand, but I'm thinking like, you know, we do the trainings. Uh, well, I haven't done it myself because I'm kind of kind of new, but, you know, occasionally we do the, the trainings with realtors, that kind of thing, the, the lunches, lunch and learns, that kind of stuff. So mm. I kind of want to bring that kind of value, you know, in a, in a digital format where they can, um, once I call them maybe and say, hey, check out this training. And then maybe they, you know, you kind of sells you a little bit more, you know, like, than, um, just someone just calling them you know so 100 kind of thinking of ways to provide value up front to kind of plant that seed before um so when you do call them up hey let's try to meet that they kind of already have a feel for you you know and then give you the chance amen amen awesome bro a couple of, couple of things one i've got somebody that i want to connect you with that will make a huge difference in the space for you if you haven't met him already so one second on that the other piece is how did you find how did you find a hey, hey, when did you get in the industry and then how did you find go high level? Um I actually started um I'm actually a Starbucks <laughs> too. Um I actually started uh with uh real estate investing. And um with that, you know, I kind of um I'm always well, always interested. Sorry? No, I'm good. I'm good, thank you. I was always interested in the marketing aspect of it. And um, at that point, I used a, um, a white label CRM that was tied into the real estate investing. Um, and little by little, you know, I found out what they're using. And then I just sparked my interest. And then I just hopped on myself and kind of built out my own systems. Um, I hired an agency to run some Facebook ads for me after I tried myself. And it was just horrible. It's like the same thing that I'm doing. I'm like, bro, I'm losing. I lost like seven thousand dollars, and they oh, did exactly shit. what I what I did, you know. And it just didn't. I didn't see the value in it because uh, I kind of, I, I guess, I, I got into that uh, the rabbit hole of marketing and kind of learning a lot of stuff. And um, it just went from there, you know. And then I got into um, I have a friend that's a loan officer, been doing it for a long time, and. Uh, you know, kind of hopped in that way. Cool, cool, man. Awesome. Are you and are you on the uh, the pro or the the ninety seven a month on the high level? I'm on the I'm on the pro. Okay, cool, cool, awesome. Yeah, because I have I also have a DJ business and I use it for that. And oh, yeah. 
my wife um, just started something too. Um, in the, the, uh, she's a nurse practitioner, so she's doing like an IV therapy type of stuff. So I'm oh, kind yeah. of using that too for that. But I do want to eventually kind of, you know, sell something to someone like a solution, you know, just to make it worth it. Yeah. So then, so do you see like mortgages? Do you like, you're not super invested in your, uh, like in being a, a top producing loan officer or anything like that? Like, this is just kind of a tool, a tool for you to like make money and, and grow something right now. Or is, am I understanding mm -hmm. that right? Not exactly. I mean, I want to build it for myself. To, to I, I am very focused in Martin. Um, that's kind of where my a lot of my focus is right now. And, uh, uh, actually, all of my focus right now is in the, the mortgage business. Um, gotcha. I, I actually, you know, I, I don't I don't want to, you know, I got my license and did all that. I want to do it for, for no reason. You know, I do want to be a top producer and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But. I just feel like, you know, a lot of the stuff that they're teaching, um, I can kind of implement that into, into something that's automated and use this to my benefit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. It's just, there's never, uh, never a shortage of opportunities to make money. There's always a shortage of, of time and energy and attention that you can dedicate to those opportunities. Right. Exactly. That's so always, if I, always the balance. If I build that solution for myself, I'm just thinking that, you know, some other people may, may find it beneficial to them and I, if I already have it built then why not make some money for it? sure thing sure thing cool man cool thanks for thanks for sharing I appreciate that um yeah like I said we you know I'm uh what I was saying when I realized that you had hopped on is um we don't uh, I'm I'm just kind of spitballing like some of the stuff that we went through with the bird team with a, a a team that's doing consumer direct lead gen at a really high level and he manages or his team manages like 14 different high level accounts because they have one for every state that they're in. And then they also have a separate one for their apps received as well. So again, just giving you some insights into like what this configuration, like what this looks like for somebody that's been doing this for uh, close to three years, running thousands and thousands of leads through this and is actually converting leads to closings, making money. What does that look like? Um, it looks like we just had somebody else hop in. Is that what you're letting me know, Mike? Jenna? Yeah. Awesome. Jenna, thanks for joining us. You are uh, you are welcome to jump in and share any questions that you have. Introduce yourself. I'm I'm happy you're here. Thanks for thanks for hopping on. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So my sister's actually a loan originator. Um. And I was, um, I found your all's group and um just wanted to hop on and see what your all's favorite um things to do with um high level R for uh loan officers. Hell yeah. How'd you find high level or how'd your sister find high level? Um, I found it, um, oh, several years ago, but I didn't hop on at the time. I was just trying to do too many other things. Um, so I finally hopped on about eight months ago. So awesome. I've been slowly awesome. learning more and more about it, but, um, and you're I've been implementing your like some things. Her business. Yes. And then I, I've been using it for my husband's business as well. He has a window treatment business. Cool, cool. What so kind of what kind of stuff are you stuff using like it that. for? Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff are you doing with either business right now? Re review funnels, basically, is how I I help awesome. her and him a lot right now. Um, Just getting so that's the main thing. Getting reviews, getting like activated. getting as many. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, Hell yeah, that's so such a great that, place to start. And then, um, starting with some like email and text text things but yeah so wanted to hop on and see what your thoughts were on um the the best thing to help loan originators yeah yeah um cool cool well uh her worry yeah, we was um using the the texting so many realtors and different partners and past clients already have her phone number and this isn't this is a thing i haven't been able to really wrap my head around yet um is getting people confused with the phone number thing yeah it's easy yeah. when you're just like putting a phone number for call tracking purposes on a website but then explaining to people how to use the phone number for um um like email and texting purposes well they already have my old number and so i don't want to be advertising two numbers and yeah, um, yeah. so i was just curious I how that. you navigated that 
Yeah. I mean, first off, I think that I think that the objection in the first place is rooted in like our reality 10 to 20 years ago. Um, I don't like I don't that my first like my first uh, at least my mindset when going into this conversation is understanding that like there are assumptions that are that are being made and being held by somebody that has objections to that that are associated with like the way things used to be and not how things are. Um, you know, for example, phone numbers, like n- not only does nobody memorize phone numbers anymore, but most people wouldn't know whether you had three or four phone numbers for your business or or not. The only time they're going to recognize it is if you are texting them or you end up texting them from multiple numbers. And then that just comes down to like, how do you plan on using the system? Is this, you know, if she's had the same phone number and has a handful of agents that she's always done business with and they always have that cell phone number, maybe those conversations never make the transition into, you know, in, in, into being made out of go high level, but any of the solicitations do or, you know, she uses phone numbers for, mar- you know, the, the go high level number for marketing purposes only. And she's super transparent. Like, you know, she sends out, um, hey, we're having a, you know, a, hey, we're ha- having a special this, you know, this special or, hey, we're doing this. I don't, I mean, it's hard for me to, hard for me to put into words what I would say in that case, because I probably wouldn't use that approach. Um, but the point is, is like, It just, it all comes down to the game plan and like the actual, the actual experience for, for her and for whoever's calling at each step in the process. Like when, when is this phone number going to be used? At what point in the process are they calling? Does the person who's calling at that point in the process give a shit whether I have two other phone numbers or not? And just really breaking that down. And what we found, like it, it was an objection that I feel like we got fairly often early on when we started empower like five six years ago um but it's not one that we hear very often anymore and it's one that that they get past really you know really easily um but that that's what i've seen now is the phone number that she's used is that a like an actual like her cell phone her personal cell phone number is that is that yeah what she's leaning on uh-huh okay Um, so yeah, so that makes it a little bit harder, but it also is like, it also brings up the question of like, well, I mean, you don't always want it to be that way. Do you like, is that really what you want? Like, that's, that's the picture of your business that you have is like everybody, whoever does business with you has your personal cell phone number and can get a hold of you there at any time. Or like, do you want, you know, do you want a picture? You have a picture of your business that looks a little bit different than that. Um, and maybe going that that route can, can help help identify. And then adding on assistance makes it makes that easier too. Exactly, a hundred percent. So it's like yeah. uh, beginning with beginning with the end in mind, kind of like with somebody like that. If they have a vision uh, that includes building a team, for example, like you just said, if they have a vision that includes building a team, then I'm going to point out to them that like, yo, you're going to have to solve this problem sooner or later. Let's just get this out of the way. Right. That makes sense. So, what are your favorite, um, I guess, ways to use high level for? L- for loan originators? Yeah, good question. So we, um, our core business is lead generation, is direct response lead generation using Google ads for loan officers. Um, And so our number one favorite is lead follow-up, basically like internet lead follow-up specifically, not just any lead follow-up, or at least that's how it was in the beginning. Now, over time with how much this system has evolved to be a a platform that a loan officer could and potentially should even be spending a couple hours inside a day. Like as it becomes more and more of a platform that you spend time in, you can start to leverage, uh, leverage the automated functionality for different components of your business and have it not feel broken. Um, you can have it feel like super uh, natural and consistent and just like a normal way of running your business. So um, in the beginning, when we first started Empower, it was just, hey, you have one landing page, you have one Google ad campaign, we're driving your leads into your high level account, only use this high level account to work those leads. We're going to send automated text messages, automated voicemails, and automated emails as soon as the lead comes in. Once the lead responds, 
we're going to create an opportunity and you're going to track that lead through the process. And that is still the way that the most most people that we interact with, that is still the way that they use the system. However, we've worked with loan officers now that have leveled up and evolved beyond that into, okay, yeah, that's, you know, that's how my lead flow, that's my internet lead flow. But what about my applications and process? What about my uh, pre-approvals or my shoppers that are out that need communicated with on a, a on a regular basis? And now we've got, uh, the content bot, the chat GPT content builder. Um, now we've got that in here as well. That's going to make it. So it's like, you know, one of my favorite new things now is like creating email content because it's because the right. content builder is there and you can go in and, and use it. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, we, we have heavily invested and been focused on like internet lead follow-up. However, um, Part of our focus is is expanding that into however loan officers are, are growing their business using it using high levels of tool to help them do that better. Okay. She was telling me recently that um she started doing a program. Um it's called Boom something. Boom Boomtown. Boomtown, maybe. Is yeah. that it? With an I, agent? It is she familiar. doing it with an agent? Yes, yes, boom. Yes, yes, that's exactly yeah. it. And it's like three, yeah. it's like a group of six of them or something that they're doing an ads campaign through. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, we're like kind of like the boomtown of the mortgage space. So like, mo like boomtown does what we do, but for real estate agents and then real estate agents get lenders to like partner in on it, but all their ads are like real estate driven. They're not mortgage driven ads. We flip that around and we have, in fact, we have lenders who charge agents like literally the opposite where agents will buy into their markets because uh we found that generating mortgage leads pre-approval leads they're higher intent and easier to convert especially for a loan officer uh than somebody who's looking at pictures of houses online that makes a lot of sense um is is your guys's pricing more comparable to that because what i guess what what she really liked about it was like only costing her like 200 bucks a month yeah. So that, so but she just started I think the it. And I, I think the cost, the cost has to do with the number of agents that she's splitting it with too, as well. Right. right? Yeah. Um, so our, so ours, in order to secure a market, it's like, uh, I think it's a thousand bucks a month for our non premium market. So we only have 10 premium markets and those are 1500 a month. And then, uh, your ad spend on top of that. So definitely a little richer than a couple hundred bucks. Um, right. but again, I'm, I'm assuming that there's an agent that's running point on that relationship with boomtown that has a bigger bill. That's just getting split amongst either multiple loan officers or loan officers and agents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said it was three, three loan officers and three agents. Exactly. So there you go. So like it, well, it might be one market her, like, that they're well, that all splitting. Maybe you're getting the bad lead and somebody else is getting a good lead. I was 100%. like, I was like that, that totally gets by chance, you know? Yep. Yep. And, and you got, and you have to trust that the agent is actually going to like refer it to you and not say, Oh, they already had a lender. Sorry. And that lender just happened to be the agent's best friend. Oh, so, so. she can still get it. She said it automatically gets emailed to her. Is that not the case? It, it, the lead will automatically get emailed, but all that lead is is a name, email address, and phone number. And so likely, at least from my experience, the way that these teams operate is they tell the loan officer, don't work the lead, we'll work it for you. Oh, really? And then we'll refer it to you when they're ready. And that, But like I said, what that introduces is the possibility, depending on how big the team is and how connected the agents are with the guy, who's run, the guy or girl who's running the team, um, what I've seen that result in is agents kind of playing favorites with their with their LOs and and claiming that oh sorry these guys already had a loan officer. And that's kind of funny. Yeah, sorry, yeah, kind, yeah, kind of until it's until it's your fucking thousand dollars a month that you're spending to have somebody else take your business. Yeah, but, that's but in my opinion too, MSAs just kind of suck in general. Like the idea of just paying a, a, a agent for their marketing and get a percentage of their business as a result of it is one that I'm not a huge fan of anyway. So it's kind of, yeah, that's, that's what know. I told her. I was like, that sounds like, a. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cheap, but you pay for a cheap stuff. You're going to get cheap results. Amen. Amen. Jenna, how is it? Is it your baby that I hear in the background? Yeah, it's 10 weeks old. 
Oh, oh my gosh. I hear the cooing. A little boy or a little girl? Boy. Boy. His awesome. name's James. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Jenna Thank and you. James. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> what's your what's your sister's name? Is she in the group? She's not. Yeah. I have the high she's level not. account for her. She 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 doesn't really even know it's high level. I mean, I I've told her that it's high level, but she doesn't really care. She just was like, okay, just set it yeah. up for me. My actually, my actually my sister got an award last year for for her how well she did. Oh hell yeah. With um, awesome. Yeah, she she won the top 10% in the nation for her um her brokerage what brokerage gateway gateway cool yeah cool awesome yeah. so right but actually i'm having a lot of troubles helping her because um so we've done really well with reviews for her um but i keep running into stumbling blocks with her company that she works for because they'll shut shut different things down that i try to help her with like i made her a website and they shut it down Oh, they said no. take it off or or we're firing you basically which shocked me because of how well she does really but, yeah i guess it just interesting which is funny because it was gateway colors that had her stuff all over it it wasn't um it was gateway branded um so i was shocked i was like this looks like it would have come from gateway like i feel like I, I did a really good job of keeping it consistent with the branding and it had her an MLS number on it and everything. I was like, I don't think yeah. I missed anything. Like what, what could have been wrong with this? Except for they just have a bunch of stupid rules. Um, it, there's a bunch of like legal documents I have to sign for even contacts to come over to high level. So it's, that's why I was like, wanted to hop on and be like, okay, what else creative can I do for her? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that, that kind of, I mean, honestly, that, oh, that really sucks. Um, we deal with we deal with mortgage companies kind of running the gamut as far as how they handle compliance. Um, what I've found is that most compliance departments like they don't have they don't have strong opinions about anything other than like their set of guidelines that they've that they've established. And yeah. and what people don't understand is compliance is is a legal interpretation. It's not black and white rule until somebody gets sued or a law gets made that says black and white, you can't do this and you can't do this. And so most of the time, what a compliance department is doing is they're just assessing risk for the corporation, not for the individual LO, for the cor right. corporation. So no matter how good a marketing campaign can perform for an individual LO, and no matter how much a marketing campaign could change a loan officer's life, it doesn't matter because the target on their back that they're protecting is so much bigger than one LO's production, which is why mm -hmm. you'll get that attitude even if she's a top producer. Right. That makes sense. So I mean, it all makes sense to yeah. me, but I'm just like, I feel like sometimes raising my hands to me, like, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> like, I know yeah. how, to, how to do marketing, but I don't know how to help you. <laughs> Yeah, no, hundred percent. So, does she have like, does she have a marketing like a uh, a marketing department that that she can work with or that you can work with to make stuff that's compliant, or is it? Yeah, is it been just horrible this, to the... work with. Oh, really? Horrible. Yeah, like they'll wait four months even to reply to her email. Yeah, I like honestly, what when when I get a loan officer that I'm talking to that is dealing with a company like that. And we're, you know, we hit a roadblock with compliance or whatever. The conversation I'm having with them is like, look, do you really want to be aligned with a company that it, like, this is their, this is their take. That's I mean, if funny, you're going to be an old that's school what I told her. loan officer forever, then what, that's one thing, but um, that's funny. There's that's plenty of, her. there's plenty of big, exactly. And you can tell her that there's plenty of big companies out there that are like, that try and find ways to make sure that what you're doing is compliant and not the other way around where they're trying to find reasons why what you're doing is not compliant. Right. Um, and it's a very, very heavy contrast. Um, but there definitely are still some companies out there that are on the wrong side of that, in my opinion. And it sounds like your sister's at one of them. Yeah. I, I like feel bad for her. They like set up all these things, but there's too many systems. It's like how, like they give them, um, bomb bomb the tool and they give them a texting tool they give them this one they give them that one and they expect them to learn them all without any training 
Um, and none of it works together. They yeah. give them surefire, you know, for, for their CRM. Terrible CRM. Terrible CRM. Yeah, it's horrible. And then the marketing assets that they put on there are stupid. <laughs> um, so that they, they gave them like 10 different things. They don't, none of them talk to each other. And I'm like, ah, like, and then they have to pay for them all. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. Uh. That's pretty crazy. And you and have you done marketing in the mortgage space before besides for your sister? Is it the only like venture? No. And this is why I don't want to. It's so like complicated. Definitely a pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, I I complicated. And like I said, some of the stuff just. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I hear that. I hear that. Um, That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Um, Cool. Well, Jenna, th- yeah, thanks for hopping on. I appreciate it. Um, feel free to hop in anytime that you have more questions around this stuff. Um, yeah. As far so as dealing to with recap, the, com- the compliance just department, some of the automations to do with like reaching out to realtors and um, and maybe some of the. You said something about divorce attorneys. That's interesting. Yeah, not not one that I've ever like had like personally that I ever did or one that I know a ton of LOs that have success with, but I talked to a loan I talked to a loan officer probably once every couple months that does that and is still successful with it. Um so we're trying to build relationships with divorce attorney attorneys. We don't have any infrastructure or like framework to provide for that. Um have you gotten a copy of our realtor outreach playbook yet? Um I might, I, I subscribed to your email list. So I might've, <coughs> I might've gotten that in my inbox and just haven't looked at it yet. Okay. Um, Ari, if you'll connect with Ari, or if you want to drop your email in the chat here, I'll make sure Ari gets you a copy of that. Um, that is going to be like, start to finish how you should set up, um, how, how you should set up the realtor outreach, like campaign play whatever you want to call it as far as like build out your list build out your automations upload your list you know manage your pipeline this way Um, i think that'll be a a really good really good place for you to start and there's nothing like uh outwardly facing that gateway would have to approve um so it seems like it would be a good good place for your sister to start awesome cool and then if you yeah, my pleasure. And and we've been we're kind of like ex- in an experimental phase with this the like group still and trying to add as much value as possible um while also like protecting you know protecting our company and making sure that like we can still monetize what we can. So with that realtor outreach playbook, the one thing I want to throw out there for you and anybody else who who watches this later, um basically if you see that any of our playbooks and you want the content that's inside those playbooks, you've got two options. You either A, sign up for an Empower LO account with us directly. Um, and then now your high level account is under our white label, um, or at least that one is. You could have, you could still have your own. Or B, you sign up as an affiliate with our Go High Level, in which case we will share the snapshot on a restricted share that'll make it so that it can only go to your account. This is something that high level just implemented last week. We're super stoked about it, but we'll share the snapshot with you in your own high level account. Um, if you sign up with us as an affiliate. So if you're all, if you're not on the pro plan yet, if you're on the $97 a month plan, then I can send you a link that'll allow you to upgrade to 297 using our affiliate link that makes you eligible for any of our snapshots. Um, if you, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. There was another point that I was going to try and make with that, but, uh, oh yeah, the affiliate. So 97, if you're not, if you're already on the pro, if you're already paying 297 a month, um, then you will likely have to sign up for a new account under ours and then transfer everything from your old account to your new account. So depending on how far you are into that, it may or may not be worth it. If you're really, really far into that process and that doesn't seem like it'd be, be- beneficial to you, um, let me know. Maybe we can work out something like a one-time fee for one of our snapshots or whatever. Um, but if you are, if you sign up with our affiliate, if you're a $97 a month, if, like direct a high level client right now, and you sign up for our link to upgrade to 297 a month, um, that makes you eligible. As soon as you get that process done, reach out to us, let us know what you're looking for and we'll give you any snapshot that you need um, to help you help you grow. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we're handling that for now. Uh, we'll, we'll get better at this whole like affiliate management thing and promoting our affiliate link and stuff like that. We'll get better at that as we go. Um, but for right now, that's kind of how we're handling it. So, uh, yeah. All right. We're 
50 minutes in. Um, does to Todd, Manny, Jenna, any of you guys have anything else that you'd like to see me touch on real quick before we sh shut this down? You've mentioned something about uh, connecting me with someone. Yes, God, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Jeff Zimfer. Do you know who Jeff Zimfer is? I do not know. Okay, so he runs the Mortgage Marketing Institute podcast, um, and I believe his – hold on. Uh, trying to think – trying to remember what his landing page is. It's like uh, agentacademy.com or .live or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to figure. No, it's not that. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to get the link, or I'll just connect you guys in a in a Facebook message or something. Um, but you can also search. Uh, I'll I'll type his name in here. Um, you'll you'll be able to find him on Facebook, no problem. He's super active, more active than I am on social media and and with a podcast and stuff like that. Um, he has like that's what he does. That's his jam. And he, in fact, he uses Go High Level as a way to do it. We're trying to find a way to partner and align a little bit so that, you know, our team can help him fulfill the demand that he has for his agent classes, um, mortgage marketing Institute. That's the link to the podcast. Yep. Um, so, um, anyways, we're trying to find a way to align that, but in the meantime, um, he, that's, that's his play basically is, um, putting together content for, uh, loan officers to run classes that attract agents. And these, these can be in-person or these can be virtual. Um, he includes like, uh, appointment, you know, the calendar appointment scheduling configuration and uh, follow up cam email campaigns and stuff like that. Really, really cool setup. Um, again, something that we'd like to partner with him on at, at some point, but that's uh, Jeff Zimfer. And um, like I said, I can't remember what the actual program itself is called, but if you go to Mortgage Marketing Institute or you Google Jeff Zimfer, um, it'll be easy to get in touch with him. All right, talk to you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. It's pretty cheap too. I know, I know that like the sticking point for us, the sticking point for us, like not working together previous was that he wasn't charging enough in my opinion. So that, th that tells you like he, like there's a lot of bang for your buck. There. There's a lot of value there. Um, so, so definitely, uh, definitely if, if it's, that's something you're looking for, um, I would recommend that like, if, if you're thinking about doing that for yourself and you've already resolved, Hey, this is the route that I want to go. I would recommend buying his shit to any loan officer that's in that spot. Gotcha, man. I appreciate that. Uh, that's it guys. I appreciate you guys hopping on. Um, this is, this is a good one. Uh, last week was last week. We got to dive into a couple a couple more things this week. We dove into a couple more things. Um, we definitely have some momentum growing behind, like getting people in here. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, like I said, as you get stuff that comes up and you want help with, don't wait, don't wait to jump into these zoom rooms because next thing, you know, we could be two, three weeks down the road and there's 10, 12 people in here and we're, and they're fighting to to be the first one to get picked as far as going through their issue because um, they know how much value they get out of it. So don't wait. Hop on next week. Thanks for thanks for jumping on, guys. Uh, Jenna, James, Todd, uh, and Manny. Thank you guys all. We'll uh, we'll see you guys next week.